select anything that you want to program yourself, remotely access, automate, something like that. And you probably heard about Arduino. Uh, how many of you have actually downloaded your own sketch and have your own Arduino device? I raise your hands. Okay, cool, very good. Of those of you who have done that, how many of you still have a project that's actually running like that, or are you like me and you kind of put it in the box and don't actually use it every day? Anyone using their stuff every day or close to every day? Perfect. Okay, so I just want to talk about the uh, open source prototyping platform called Arduino. I may not even be pronouncing it right. Yeah. <laughs> close enough. Uh, it's uh, basically a way for you to build something embed some intelligence into it, or at the very least, some kind of automated functionality or, or uh, control. Where do you get them? I'm going to cover all this kind of stuff. So first, uh, the main website, arduino.cc, uh, hosted out of Italy. They basically explain it really well. It's an open source prototyping platform based on flexible, easy to use hardware and software for hobbyists and artists and engineers and, and whatever else. It can receive input from sensors, though you see the bare board there by itself. It just has a bunch of little socket connections for digital and analog inputs and outputs, but it has a big processor. Most, uh, uh, if not all, of the, the true Arduino stuff are based on Atmel processors. That's kind of how I got into the Arduino thing is uh, I've been coding on uh, Atmel processors doing uh, embedded designs for a few years and uh, really like them. And this is a much easier way to write code. So instead of taking a, a bare chip and writing all the code from scratch, I can open up an Arduino sketch, write two or three lines of code, and do something useful uh, in a lot less time. Yeah, sure, I, I'm not buying a $2 chip and putting it on a $1.50 circuit board. Uh, I now have to buy a $10 or $15 development board, but I don't have to spend all that additional time developing. Where do you get one? Get on Arduino's website. Look at the, uh, the Arduino store. They have lots of distributors throughout the world. Um, Pardon me one second. I forgot one thing that I need for my demo. Okay. I have to find it. I can't find it. Never mind. Uh, but uh, I find a lot of them uh, just right on Amazon. There are a lot of different module models available from the basic Arduino Uno. Basic small simple board, it's got 32K of flash, has a little 16 megahertz processor, um, and as you can see, 14 digital I.O., 6 analog inputs, and PWM, pulse with modulated outputs, that you can use to generate analog signals if you filter them, or they can be used to control motors, things like that. You have much more advanced devices, uh, more I.O., um, additional digital I.O., analog inputs, and, and PWM. Uh, the, one of the most recent ones is the uh, Arduino Do. It has uh, an actual ARM Cortex processor on it, much higher end. I haven't actually programmed uh, on those, on any of those just yet, uh, but as far as I know, it's, it's just as simple and straightforward as uh, any of the other uh, Arduino products. Any questions, smart remarks so far? All right, so there's a picture of the Uno. The shape is actually really common among most of the uh, Arduinos. This little sort of bump out to the right-hand side, uh, you'll find that, uh, in fact, the entire shape of the board fits nicely into a lot of uh, existing cases and prototyping platforms. I'll show you one of them over here in a little while. The Mega, they just make it a little bit longer, but has the same basic shape. That's what it is. Sorry, I was just missing one of my other Arduinos. It was in the bag. Uh, the Mega, of course, just has a bigger processor, and the Do takes that a step further with the, um, with the ARM processor. Anyone used any of the bigger ones, the Arduino Do, or we all like me on a lot of the basic ones? Okay. Sorry, one last plug to plug in for the demo. This is a new one. I've only been able to find this one distributed through Radio Shacks. Uh, meant to pick one up, didn't get around to it. And it has a lot of built-in sensors. Plug it right into the computer, program it like any other Arduino, and it you know, kind of looks a lot like a, a handheld controller for a video game system. There's an accelerometer on there. You can see right in the center the, the little three-axis indicator. So it can measure acceleration and movement. 
Uh, it has the slider across the bottom of the joystick, buzzer, microphone, uh, all of that kind of stuff. So you can use the sensors right out of the box and maybe not have to attach anything else. There are uh, a lot of spin-offs on Arduino. I have in the bottom of one of my boxes, and it's so small I've lost it, <laughs> about uh, less than an inch square. Plugs right into the USB port. It's called the DigiSpark. Is it there? It's right on this side. Good call. And as far as I know, that's the smallest Arduino. Um, and the cool thing is they made the board thick enough so it plugs right into the USB port. And even though this particular chip doesn't have a true USB interface on it, they kind of fake it out and it works. They adjust the supply voltage to, to make the electronics interface. And it has a USB-based bootloader. You can program it right through the Arduino environment. They, their idea with this was to make an Arduino that's cheap enough to leave deployed in a, in a project. It doesn't have a whole lot of I.O., but a couple of digital, a couple of analog. Very cool, very small. I'll leave that out on there so you can see it on the camera in a minute. Another one that I bought but I started playing with but didn't actually integrate yet is uh, the OSPID controller. Um, to do some of the electronics projects I do, I have a uh, toaster oven I bought off of Amazon for 60 bucks. And I want to control it a little bit more accurately than just turning the knobs because I'm using it to reflow circuit boards when I build projects sometimes. So the idea is going to be, and its intention is uh, you put the temperature probe inside the oven. It has an LCD display, press a little push button so you can control it and set profiles. And over the USB interface, you can uh, put a full reflow oven profile or, you know, uh, on their website, they show they're using it to control water cooling for lasers and all kinds of things. PID is just proportional integral derivative control. It's just a way uh, control people use to, uh, to make a temperature or a uh, mass flow or something match a target value. You say, I want this thing to be 25 degrees Celsius, and it'll adjust the heating and cooling to keep you right on target. The Smart Maker platform, this was a Kickstarter project that I backed, and unfortunately they didn't get them shipped out fast enough uh, for us to, uh, to show them today. Let me see if my network came up. There it is. Uh, this successfully funded on Kickstarter a while back. I'm only connected because I'm a backer. The cool thing is it's taking Arduino to a little bit more organized level. Uh, you can see on this project, I've got a whole bunch of wires, spaghetti wire all over the place to connect everything together. And uh, the uh, smart maker guys, their claim to fame is making the uh, devices easier to hook together. So they have a nice little connection, interconnection system. You plug all the stuff together and you can have an Arduino project that is more compact isn't as susceptible to having wires pulled out, but just as easy to use any, as uh, any other uh, Arduino. Um, so let me go back one more time. And uh, later this afternoon, we'll be presenting on something that uh, Martin and I are working on, um, another future Arduino project. We call it the Extra B radio module, kind of a replacement for uh, some other commercial modules. We don't have it integrated yet, but the plan is to have an Arduino bootloader in it so we can plug it right in and put any application inside the radio module. Basically makes wireless Arduino projects a lot easier, less expensive to do. So instead of buying circuit board with an Arduino and then a shield, that, an adapter that has a wireless interface on it of some kind, you can put everything right inside the module itself, a little bit like uh, the, the uh, DigiSpark modules. So that's just the, uh, the website of the uh, open source project. Not a lot of posts there yet, uh, but that's where we're going to work together to develop a lot of that firmware. So you can add a shield onto the top of this thing. The circuit board by itself isn't all that interesting. It doesn't do a whole heck of a lot. Um, you can blink some lights and not a whole lot more than that. So you start with the basic Arduino platform, basic circuit board, and clamp on a shield that often just sits right on top of the board. It's about the same size as the board. Some shields are a lot bigger, like this one is a, a good for home automation stuff. It's got eight big fat relays on it. Instead of clamping on this one, you just use a few jumper wires to connect it uh, to the Arduino. And this allows the I.O. on this to now control um, much, much more current power things in the real world. Uh, I don't think this thing has been approved by UL or anything, but the relays are rated for high voltage. But, you know, I wouldn't recommend that without knowing what you're doing. There are uh, other boards, uh, other little shields. 
that add uh, capability like motor control. This one has a little gear motor and a motor driver. Connect that right to the Arduino, and the Arduino can now control the motor rotation, step direction, speed, all of that. Uh, some of the other really cool ones, especially when you start getting into connectivity and, and doing a real deployed project at your house or something like that, uh, is you can get an Ethernet shield. Let me see if I made these into links. Those aren't. It's probably on the next page. Um, Ethernet lets you plug in an Ethernet connection. It has really basic interface capability. All right, This doesn't have the computing power of a Raspberry Pi. It's not quite that high end, but the Ethernet shield offloads a lot of that work from the Arduino processor. Uh, you can run a basic little web server. Don't plan on hosting anything very big on it, but for live access and uh, you know, controlling some things on and off, monitoring the state of sensors, some data logging, it's appropriate for that. Um, you won't be streaming any video off of it. Uh, Wi-Fi, of course, when you don't have an Ethernet connection close by. GSM is a pretty cool one. It's actually a, a little cell phone. Basically, you can give a cell phone to your Arduino, and you can send it text messages, or it can send you text messages, and uh, I believe it also gives you internet socket access, so you can uh, uh, send information over uh, TCP IP networks. An SD card shield for data logging, a wireless shield uh, that will allow you to put on other uh, wireless modules, and the motor control I already showed you. If you want to see a lot, of, a lot more detail on this, Follow the link and the website uh, gives you a pretty good overview. Just scroll through them soft and slowly so you can get some idea. There's also this whole series of lily pad Arduinos. They're pretty small. I think that's where the DigiSpark guys kind of got their idea to start from. Uh, the micro and nano are really small. Those are uh, pretty similar to the ba basic stamp microcontrollers if you've ever used those years ago. They're probably still around. They call this from the Arduino Pro. The idea is it's supposed to be lower cost. They don't give you all of the, all of the bells and whistles of the regular Arduino. You can see the connectors are a little less. Uh, you know, it's a smaller USB connector, and they don't even populate the headers. And uh, some of the shields. There's that GSM shield for texting and uh, messaging when you don't even have Wi-Fi nearby, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and so on. So if you really want to see the kind of stuff that, uh, that people are interfacing with, go to shieldlist.org. There are, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of different shields that you can interface to everything imaginable. If you download the presentation, it's a live link. It'll take you right there. It shows them by industry. Probably the most fascinating way to find them is look for the ones that have the most, like Adafruit, uh, Ethernet, GPS motor, sorry for the small font size. Um, over here, I think Seed, where'd they go? Seed Studio has a bunch of them. Um, a Relay and Protos, I don't know what the stalker is, that sounds a little weird. Native Real Time Clock, XB Networking, SD card. So it has a lot of stuff on a single shield. So instead of stacking up two or three shields, you can get a lot of functions in a, in a single shield. Uh, if you want to play Big Brother, you can get a GPS logger shield, slap the thing with a magnet underneath uh, somebody's car and have it data log it. You can probably also put a, uh, uh, a GSM shield on there and have it text you automatically when your target has gotten to the place that you want to follow them to. I don't know. There's some really creepy projects you could do that way. <laughs> I've never done any of those, and I don't think I really should ever try. GPS, uh, let's see, data logger shield, you know, how often in uh, doing some independent consulting stuff, a lot of times someone will say, can you give us a, something that will let us log some data? We want to monitor the light level or the temperature somewhere or water level out in a, uh, you know, a, a pond in the middle of uh, central Utah or something like that. And a lot of the time they just need one or two or 10 or 20 of these things and it's really easier to just grab a couple of Arduinos and shields and a data logger, put the things together uh, and then uh, you can have it save the data to the SD card in any format you want. And it's, you know, a lot of the times in, uh, in at least the way that uh, my friend Martin and I think, you know, we, when we create a solution for somebody, the first thing that comes to mind as a hardware engineer is, well, we can make a circuit board for that. 
And the Arduino makes it possible for you to instead say, is there already an existing board for that? It could save me a lot of time and effort, and I can spend more time making better data analysis or doing something more useful than creating a circuit board that already basically exists. Um, the Wave Shield voice changer, it's great. If you want to be Darth Vader, you can get the Wave Shield and <coughs> alter your voice. You really want to go high end. Um, you know, you're starting to get in the world where with the color, color touch screen, it might make more sense to go to a Raspberry Pi and, you know, a, a little bit bigger LCD, but they do have full color touch screen capable screens. It's going to run a lot slower than what you would expect getting from a, you know, a cell phone or some other special purpose touch screen, but the capability is there. If you want to make uh, a project with a really nice looking display, you can absolutely do it. Take this and combine it with a, a rapid prototyping printer that'll print your own 3D models and you can you know, make products now, today, for a few hundred bucks that would have cost tens of thousands in design work just a few years ago. So this does dovetail nicely with, uh, with that kind of stuff. So robotics, automation, security, remote monitoring, impress your friends, foil your enemies. Um, my, uh, Pardon me for a moment, I'll tell you one quick story. My daughter came home uh, a couple of months ago from school. She's 11 and said, Dad, we're having a contest at school to make boxes to put Valentines in. And I don't want to just do a basic box. I want mine to be really cool. And she had had the idea, when somebody walks up to her Valentine's box to put in their little Valentine, she wanted the thing to have a motion sensor to have the top open automatically. You can tell she's an engineer's daughter, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, go figure. And I thought, and I said, mm, well, I could do, you know, and the second thing that came to mind, because the first thing was too complicated, the second thing was, I can use an Arduino to do that. And the next thing was, well, I can get a passive infrared sensor. I, I've got some of those. I've, I finally ordered a shield for it. There's a passive infrared sensor. It has a little clear white lens on the front, and people walk in front of it, and it triggers the motion sensor. And I thought I might use that. And then my other daughter came in. Uh, you know, she's nine and said, I want one too. I said, crap, I've only got one motion sensor. So instead, I put a light sensor on the front. Those are the, the little dots down here. It's just a cadmium sulfide resistive light sensitive chip. They're super cheap. You can even get them at the shack, uh, at Radio Shack or wherever. Hook that on there, and I use that as a light sensor. And when somebody walks up to it, the box pops open. They put in their Valentine, and it closes up. For that, I used a library that's uh, uh, included with the Arduino environment uh, called Servo. This is a servo motor that I took out of a remote controlled car that was broken down sitting in the, in the garage. Plug in the power, the ground, and the control wire. Turn on the servo library and uh, can control it, open and close it. Wrote a few lines of code and basically combined a sensor library with the uh, servo library and I had a Valentine's box and she won the contest and she was very happy. So, <clears throat> okay, not, not a really a you know, big revenue project, not something really exciting, but it's something you can do fast and simple and build easily. If you want to add sensors, just Google Arduino sensors and you'll find tons of stuff. There are, there's just about every imaginable sensor that you would like. Uh, again, if you download the presentation slides, I think this is a live link to, uh, to a Google search and you'll find just, just about anything you can imagine. And if you don't, you know, if you can't find a sensor specifically for Arduino, then find a sensor that puts out an analog or digital value and hook it through, uh, through one of the uh, other accessory shields. Not a problem. So let's go on to a couple of examples and demos. Uh, let me switch over. So pardon me, this is the one thing I didn't have time to set up correctly. So you open the Arduino environment. And we'll zoom in on these in just a second. So it's, it's built around um, processing. I'm not terribly familiar with it, other than the fact that it's a really cool way to develop quick applications. Um, you pull up an example, zoom out just a little bit here, inside the Arduino application, and it's available for Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever you like. You pull up the examples, and it has things for basic input, reading serial, writing serial, uh, digital and analog input and output. Is that big enough, by the way? Or do I need to zoom in more? Okay. Uh, analog input. 
Um, communication, it'll spit out an ASCII table out of its serial port. Um, basic control, uh, loops and so on. It's also a, a decent way that if you don't know C or C++, you can actually pick up the language pretty fast by taking an example sketch. You can figure out how the data moves around, how a function works and all of that and build an application that, again, modify an application and make it do something that you want it to. Um, so strings, it'll, uh, string parsing, keyboard and mouse. Some of the Arduinos, especially, I think it was the Mega, has a USB interface that instead of going through a serial converter that just talks to the chip, it's, the USB is actually hosted on the processor that the Arduino controls, or, or the, the Arduino is, I guess, is a better way to put it. You can download sketches that make that USB port behave like just about anything you want. So there's a sketch that you download into the Arduino Mega. Unplug the Arduino, plug it back in with a USB cable, and it emulates a keyboard for your computer. And you can then attach buttons to it and have it type messages. Or uh, it can emulate a mouse. So if you really want to mess with somebody, get one of these really, really tiny Arduinos, put a mouse sketch in there that every once in a while randomly moves the mouse pointer, then go, go plug this into a couple of computers in the lab at school and watch people go absolutely insane, right? <laughs> I just thought of that one. I'm probably going to find out it was a really bad idea to do that. But <clears throat> I heard where police departments use it where if they go to confiscate someone's computer mm -hmm. and they're logged in and they don't want it to like mock the screen, they'll plug something in like that. And, and it keeps moving the mouse. Moving the mouse so it's, exactly it's perfect. It, for all we know, it could even be an Arduino project, right? Very likely it's out there. If you Google it, you'll probably find it. Uh, the starter kits, I haven't used these, but there is a big giant kit available on Arduino's site. Um, it's, I don't know, 100, 150 bucks that includes a circuit board and a whole bunch of sensors and outputs and motors. And these starter kit projects, I'm pretty sure, are specifically related to that kit. So it'll use a, a servo to indicate your mood don't know what that means. The color mixing lamp, I don't even want to know what the level meter is. Uh, probably measures the resistance of your hands to determine um, how sweaty they are. Um, there's an EEPROM data storage. If you don't need a full-blown SD card to store a lot of data, you can put a few things in the EEPROM, which even if you erase the main memory of the Arduino, um, it may not be set up that way by default, but you can keep data stored in that EEPROM. Uh, of course, there are examples for the Ethernet libraries and, and, uh, and other uh, accessory shields. By the way, how are we on time? Where's our room monitor? Uh, it's almost noon. we got half an hour, right? We're good? Okay. Thanks. Liquid Crystal. I'm going to switch over now to um, the camera over here, and I'll probably have to adjust the brightness <coughs> because the display turns out a little too bright. But there you can see we have an Arduino Uno. And I've connected it up with one of these LCD displays. So I'll just go ahead and turn down that brightness a little bit. You can probably just barely see it. And right now there's a sketch running in here that senses the amount of light from this little light sensor up here. Now you can see the sensor as well. So that's the sensor up slightly above. And then it's displaying a number on the screen indicating how much light there is. So if I put my flashlight on there, the sensor is pulling the voltage all the way to ground, so I, I should probably reverse the numbers on this thing. And it goes down to zero, up to bright. That's really the, the basic idea behind the light sensor that I used for my daughter's project. One really interesting thing, and this goes back to sensors and sampling and all of that kind of stuff. Once in a while, you may hook up a sensor and you get a reading that makes absolutely no sense to you. For example, this LED flashlight has a couple of different settings. Uh, one is the bright setting, very, very bright. One is the dim setting. And to you and me, that just looks like a dim light. To a fast sensor, what's really happening is that light is blinking on and off a few hundred times a second. And it's doing what the Nyquist sampling theorem calls aliasing. Occasionally, it samples when the light is on. Occasionally, the sensor is sampled when the light is off. So I'm getting a result that is occasionally zero and occasionally like there's no light at all. So you might need to add some filters or something like that if you have pulse light. Now, one project I wasn't able to get done uh, and working in time to bring a show <coughs> was using an LED flashlight connected to one Arduino to send data over a light beam. 
It's not a totally new concept. People have been doing it for a long time. It's just cool to be able to do it with an Arduino. And you can send digital pulses of light over the light beam, have this light sensor receive those pulses, decode them, and you could send text data, or if you really went crazy and made the data rate really high, you could stream audio over a light beam. So it would be a fun kind of project to do. I didn't have enough time to get it all uh, up and running. So let me go back for just a moment to the uh, laptop so you can see actually how to build one of these. Pardon me while I zoom out for just a moment. I'm going to find in the sketchbook, in fact, let me remind myself which, um, which demos I was going to do. So LCD serial display first. So up here in the examples, there is a liquid crystal LCD serial display. So that opens up this example sketch. Let me move it up here so you can see a little more closely. And sorry, the comments are gray in here, so it makes it a little harder to read. It uses a 16 by 2 LCD display. Um, there are a bunch of displays available. You hook up about five wires, six wires, and the uh, Arduino can now control the display. But you don't want to have to go in and write the drivers to figure out what pins to toggle when. So the LCD library already has all that work done for you. All you have to do, sorry, I scrolled a little fast. There's a nice documentation web page, the Liquid Crystal Serial Display. All you're doing is adding this pound include for liquidcrystal.h. It pulls in this library, and you can use the Liquid Crystal functions. Now, I'm kind of a C programmer, so forgive any code you see that I may have written. Uh, I tend to write in C, even though this is a C++ compiler. So. I'm kind of getting into the object-oriented thing, but I'm not up to speed completely. So you create the library. You tell it which I.O. pin numbers, this 12, 11, 5, 4, 3, 2. Those are literally just the pin numbers that appear on the Arduino Uno circuit board. There's a number. I take a wire. I connect that to the corresponding wire that it tells me to use on the LCD display. I hook up those four or five or six wires. Uh, it does a setup. It does an LCD begin. It tells it that it's a 16 by 2 line display, which is the type of display I have. It's one of the most common ones. If you have a single line display, you just change those numbers. It's not hard. It also uses the serial library and does a serial begin at 9600 baud. So the same USB cable that you use to program the Arduino when a sketch is running can also be used to do serial communication with the Arduino. So it's going to open a serial port that I can talk to. It's going to start that at 9600 baud, and it's going to set up the LCD display. Then, so that's the setup function. It runs once at the beginning of the sketch. And there's a loop function, which call, gets called as often as the code can run it. Uh, and then anything else that the Arduino needs to do in the background, interrupt service routines, servicing to handle timers, all that stuff, you just don't see. You don't have to worry about. So it's looking, using the method, serial.avail, well, the, the available method on the serial object to see if anyone has typed any characters. If they're available, it waits 100 milliseconds for the rest of the characters to arrive. So if you've typed more than one letter, it will wait around until they all come through. Then it will clear the LCD screen and then write out the characters using the LCD write function. I mean, just a few lines, really basic example, right? So at the risk of incurring the wrath of the demo gods that always break things. Let me make sure I have the right board because I have two Arduinos plugged in. And I don't remember which one this one is. I'm going to take a guess that it's the second one. And I need to make sure that I'm telling it that it's the right board. This one is an Arduino Uno. So I select the Uno. And then I click on Upload. And if it's right, and I'm seeing lights blink on my Arduino board. I did pick the right one, fortunately. So let me switch back to the dock camera now. And we'll adjust that brightness down one more time. Is it this one? That one. Thank you. So you can see the display. You can see it's completely blank. There is a serial monitor. Serial port. Um, if I can find it. There it is. It just opens up a text window, and I can type Open West 2013, click on Send, and whew, wow, it worked. OK, uh -huh. makes me feel better. <laughs> just so you can see what I was doing on this screen, I'll, I'll switch back to the laptop for just a moment. Uh, I went up to the Arduino menu, and I chose Tools, Serial Monitor, and it popped up. Sorry about all the panning and zooming. 
and it popped up this screen, and I'm able to type in any message, click send, and going back to the doc camera, you'll see that the message is now updated. So you can send anything you want. You can do serial receive and get messages back. So if you're building a data logger or a um, automatic door lock opener or something, you can get some feedback as to whether the lock actually opened or what the data is and have it dump it out to your serial port. So switching over, uh, any questions, comments, smart remarks so far? Are you enjoying this? Am I covering stuff that you're interested in or am I boring you silly? Tell me if I'm completely going off the reservation. I want this to be something that is helpful to you. So tell me if we're doing okay. All right. Back to the sketches. I'm sorry. I'm juggling too many screens here. LCD custom character. We can't see anything. I will, I'll just download this other sketch for you. But I'll let you see what I'm doing when I download the sketch. So another example. Close the serial monitor. I don't need him. I go into the examples again. And thank you for the reminder, though, that you couldn't see it. Um, where was it? It's under LCD, liquid crystal, custom character. Okay? This example uses uh, the same LCD, but this the chip that's on this LCD display allows you to download your own custom character set. And you basically send in a, a little Boolean array of ones and zeros, pixel on, pixel off. Well, they've created some custom arrays for a heart and a smiley face and a frowny and a little picture of a guy who waves his arms. And it uses LCD create character to create the heart using that byte array. You just download, I mean, it's so straightforward and simple. If you've done any kind of programming, it's not very hard. Um, it's a really good way to introduce um, kids or anybody who wants to learn about uh, programming and building electronic projects to do it because it's very straightforward. Uh, it does an LCD begin and then it runs the loop. I don't think this example is actually reading this sensor reading. It doesn't analog read. I don't think it's doing that. And it's just doing some uh, updates with the uh, LCD display. So I'm going to run that sketch. I click the upload. And I've only run into this occasionally, but once in a while the sketches won't compile correctly. So take a look down here. I'm sure there's some C++ guys who will be able to tell me exactly what's wrong with this sketch. It says the call of an overloaded write function is ambiguous, and it highlights the overloaded function for me. Well, it's interesting that the LCD write with a 1, it didn't give me an error, but the LCD write with a 0 is. One of you guys could probably explain in detail why the 0 matters, why it doesn't. I don't know whether it thinks it could be a null or some other type of character, but I did figure out that if I explicitly cast this to a uint32, uh, uint8 type, that it should build and work. If you run into a problem like that, let's see if it did. Done uploading. Okay, back to the document camera. And I love Arduino with the little guy who's waving his hands. So if you want to create a bar graph that shows the battery state of something, you can use the custom character library to do that. Okay. Uh, next one. I really don't need any of those. Uh, the light sensor I already showed you. Let's do the ultrasonic range finder example. This one, the, uh, the example was not already built into the Arduino library. When I bought this uh, ultrasonic sensor, and I'll show it to you when we get over there. Uh, it's a little ultrasonic sensor. It has a transmitter and a receiver. It sends out little pulses of ultrasonic sound. And uh, you put in a, a digital I.O. that sends a pulse, and then there's another digital I.O. that when the pulse comes back, it goes, uh, you know, flips high and low again. So uh, there's an example library. When you buy this thing off of Amazon for seven or eight bucks or whatever it was, it tells you to go download the library. You copy it into a special folder in your Arduino environment. It explains exactly where that is. And it adds it to your example uh, list. So up here under the list, you can see everything above this line these are all really standard examples that are included with the uh, Arduino environment. There's a good list down below that is also included, but some of these I have added, like the ultrasonic library, has the ultrasonic demo. And this one also uses um, the uh, LCD display to display the range or distance that the ultrasonic library is measuring. So let's upload that sketch. It's really cool. It compiles really fast. As far as I know, the, you know, the underpinning 
um, compiler is you know GCC or some variant of GCC, maybe G++, I'm not sure. Uh, and, uh, but it's still remarkably quick. So let me see if I'm missing something here. Testing ultrasonic ranging, set cursor clear, and okay, all right, it is working. It's just, I wasn't seeing it on the display. Switching back one more time. You notice it's showing these really long ranges. So the uh, ultrasonic sensor is this part right here, has a transmit and a receiver, its own crystal, some little parts. If I give it a nice surface to reflect off of, it tells me that this panel is 39, 40 centimeters. As we move away, it's more like 60 centimeters. We're really, really close. There's always a dead gap. The first five, 10 centimeters usually doesn't work because it takes time for the circuitry to generate the pulse, let the electronics settle down uh, for the pulse to come back. And if you're too close, it just won't work. It'll, it'll give you an error or no result. But now you can measure distance. Uh, you can see if somebody walks through a door, perhaps. Of course, you could also use a, a beam break sensor for that as well. But again, that's a circuit board I got off of Amazon for, I don't know, I think it was eight bucks, something like that. Added on, connected two or three little I.O. pins, connected up the LCD, and you have a rangefinder. And of course, you can now add code to make it do something much more interesting or intelligent for your project. Let's take it up a notch, though. I don't have any of the color LCDs, but let's look at a, a bigger graphical LCD. Uh, this one, we'll do the code here real quick first. The U8G logo is just an example that was available for this particular LCD display. When I downloaded it, well, I'm sorry, when I bought the display, it linked to a website, and there were a couple of examples there. So this is one of them. The setup, they, uh, they create some functions, drawing color box, drawing logo, and a bunch of things like that. And then the main loop goes through and uh, does one screen of one image and a different screen of another image. It's a little bit more involved code, but that's because it's doing a, uh, several different uh, graphics routines. So now I need to tell it, it's very important, that I choose the right board, which is no longer an Uno, but it's now a, I don't even know how to pronounce, Duelo Manov. I'm not, uh, I can't really pronounce most of the names of the boards. And we need to change over to the serial port of the other board. USB serial. And I should be able to upload this sketch. And here's another one that tells me uh, UAG was not declared in this scope, which is a little odd. I don't remember this one having an error. Maybe I uh, messed with it. But let me show you one of these sketches I already have downloaded in it, and then we'll come back and see if I can download another sketch. Fortunately, I left one in there. So this is not a really high-end Arduino. It's, it's the same size. It has the same chip. It's a, the little 32K memory processor running at 16 megahertz. I've added a couple of uh, little buttons that allow you to navigate the screen. And there is an example program called Little Rook Chess. Don't know why you'd want to play chess against an Arduino, but you can. The buttons, forgive me for a moment while I try and remember the navigation. So I can do a new game as either player. We'll let the computer go first. And I can press next, yes, the right button. There it is. And we get a little chess board. And the other player went first. And I can now use the navigation buttons to move around. And if right now I've selected that pawn and I can choose the, the legal moves that that pawn could make and press enter to say, yes, I'd like to do that move. That's a pretty pathetic opening move. I know I'm probably going to get slammed really bad. Uh, so we can choose a different piece, and I can threaten that uh, you want to go back one? knight. <laughs> I'm trying to remember which button does what, so uh, I'm probably going to make a really bad move. Okay, there. I'm going to put him there so that uh, I can at least threaten his, his knight. <laughs> you probably want to label your buttons to get a little bit better navigation. <laughs> or, or you know, the right? other Arduino. Okay, so uh, there we go. That's another really boneheaded chess move. But you can play chess against the computer. All right, would you really want to play chess? Probably not. But it demonstrates a lot of programming techniques. It gives you an example to start from where you have a user interface, and they have already written the code that does switch debouncing 
if you've ever played with electronics, anytime you hook a switch to a digital input of something, the uh, contact makes contact several times and, and it literally bounces for a few milliseconds. And the processor is running at megahertz. It can actually observe those bounces. So somewhere in there, somebody has written code that ignores those extra switch bounces and has created the graphical library to draw the rectangles and the shapes and all of that. So you can start from something that already does kind of what you want it to do, like playing chess and you can turn it into a home automation system that sets back your thermostat with a chess display on it or something. <laughs> <laughs> you must move your chess pieces before the thermostat turns up. I don't know. It really yeah, tick you off on a cold morning. So let me see, uh, switching back for just a moment. Uh, any uh, other, I think we still have another four or five minutes for questions, comments, smart remarks. What's the price like? range of the, uh, the Arduino boards and adapters? Excellent question. What's the price range? Uh, as low as 12 or 15 bucks for a lot of them. I mean, some of the adapters are, you know, five, six, seven, eight. Um, the higher end Arduinos, the biggest processors are, are more like 50 or 60 bucks. If you're looking for raw compute power, though, look to a Raspberry Pi instead. Incidentally, there are some Arduino Shield adapters that let you take an Arduino Shield and put it on a Raspberry Pi. And there are other devices that allow you to attach an Arduino to the Raspberry Pi because often the Raspberry Pi, you're going to do a user interface or databasing or large data storage. Let the, the Raspberry Pi do what it's good at and let an Arduino do something that has hard real-time requirements, fast timing or, uh, or other things like that. Yeah? Is it all USB powered or do you have to add separate supplies? Most of them have, uh, can be powered off the USB port while you're programming and downloading sketches. Uh, almost all of them also include a standard barrel connector so you can connect any power supply you like. They have a specific range that they recommend, something like 8 to 12 or 14 volts. The regulator can handle more than that, but the thing gets really hot. So, yeah. Other questions? Comments? Please. If you uh, were using the servo motors, would you recommend using motor shield or just hooking up directly to the since I've done the just hooking up um, without, I mean, the motor shield is really good for controlling a stepper motor. The servo motors have a single pin and you send it a special pulse. For that, you really don't need any kind of a shield, though it, it might look a little nicer to connect it in with a good connector. So if you're just using a servo motor for remote control hobby type stuff, you probably don't need one. If you want um, something with better feedback or better control, then get a motor shield with the stepper. They also tend to have a little bit higher torque, I think. <laughs> But it's really easy to use the, the servos. Others? All right. Uh, if that's What's it. What's the website again? Uh, the website, arduino.cc. No, not that one. Then. Yours. The oh. Constellation, uh, Constellation Labs. Constellationlabs.com. Um, and if you would, if I can put in a plug for our, in another uh, 2 o'clock after lunch. Is it 2 o'clock? Uh, we're doing another presentation in here where we'll be talking about a very specific type of uh, Arduino, what we want to make Arduino enabled in the future, uh, the open source Extra B radio module. So please um, come and attend that if you have any interest in wirelessly enabling your projects. And thanks a lot. <laughs>